everyone, it's Nina, and I'm here today with Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be using these Halfy Days stamp set from Newton's Nook Designs. We're going to be featuring this in our project today. We're going to be creating a spotlight scene shaker card. And I've got my images here on my Misty tool. I'm going to be stamping them with some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. When I'm calling this a spotlight scene shaker card, we're going to be spotlighting a scene using a circle to create the effect of pulling your eyes right into that portion of the card rather than having the scene take up the entire piece. So here I'm stamping an extra little lily pad here for my frog scene. I'm going to color these images in with my Copic markers. I'm going to be listing the colors on the side of the screen so you can replicate the color combinations if you like them. I'm using some light greens for the frog. I'm going to add in a little bit of a dot technique along the edges of the coloring just to kind of fade it into each color. I used three colors on the frog and then I'll just add a little bit of dot technique for this darkest color. For the little accent portions on him, I'm going to use some light yellows. Then for the lily pads, I'm going to go ahead and use slightly darker greens than what I used on the frog. I'm using some pretty simple coloring here to color these images in. They're pretty small, so you don't want to go too, too detailed on them. I'll blend those out, and then I'll go ahead and work on the little flowers. I just colored them in with a couple of pink colors. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with my scissors. I'm going to fussy cut them and leave a white border around the images just like as if I had die cut them. There aren't dies for this set, so if you want to do this kind of card, you're going to have to use some scissors and cut them out. Okay, so now I've got some paper here. This is some regular cardstock. I'm going to be using some regular cardstock to go ahead and do some watercoloring. I've got my Distress Ink colors. We're going to be using Tumble Glass, Broken China, and Peacock Feathers. Now, I chose regular cardstock because I wanted to be able to have the texture that regular cardstock gives when you do watercoloring on top of it. The key with doing this is, though, that you're going to want to use very little water. And I'm using this foam sponge brush. I'm going to go ahead and dab my color onto the paper here. You can see that the ink sits on top of the paper rather than soaking in like on regular watercolor paper. And I really like this effect. It creates a really nice textured effect and kind of something different than regular watercolor paper. So just remember not to use too much water when you're doing this. For this particular brush, I've squeezed it out quite a bit and that helps keep, keep the water from being too heavy. Next, I'm going to start working on the grass. We're going to be putting some grass behind our water and I'm using some green colors to do this. I've got Twisted Citron as the base color. Then I'm going to take some Lucky Clover and I'm going to add that in along the bottom. Now the Twisted Citron and the Lucky Clover don't technically blend together really nicely, but you're going to see once we got the Lucky Clover put down, we're going to add in a little bit of mowed lawn. And this is going to blend the colors and give them a nice green ombre color tone. It's a really nice color combination once you get the colors blending. Finally, I took a little bit more of that Lucky Clover on a block here and I'm just going to flick on some of it using a paintbrush. I just dipped my paintbrush in water, got it nice and wet, and then dipped it into the Lucky Clover ink. And then I'll just flick that on using a brush and I'll go ahead and dry that. Doing this creates a really nice splattered texture effect on the grass and helps it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the panel that our scene is going to be nested into. I'm using a Simon Says Stamp Stitched Rectangle Die and also a Simon Says Stamp Stitch Circle Die. These are the largest in both sets. I'm going to be lining these up. You could do these one at a time, but to save time, I'm going to go ahead and do both of them together. So I'm going to line them up on my magnetic platform. The magnetic platform holds them in place so they don't move, and I'll just go ahead and run that through my machine. Next, we're going to take that blue piece that we've created for the water, and we're going to run this through with the Lawn Fawn Waves Border Die Set. And then we're also going to take that green piece and die cut the grass using a My Favorite Things Grassy Hills die. Again, this magnetic platform is holding all of my dies in place, which saves me from having to tape them down as I run them through my machine. Alright, so to put our card together, I've added some acetate behind our panel, and I'm laying the little water piece on top. I die cut this using one that same stitched circle die, just to give it a nice clean edge so we can do some inlay die cutting. I'm going to take my lily pad and I'm going to add these on to my scene. I ended up not placing them in this exact placement. I ended up moving them slightly once I got them placed down. But you can get the general idea. You just build your scene. And again, we're spotlighting it in the top center of the card. And this is going to draw the person's eye that receives this card. 
it's going to draw that person's eye to that portion of the card. So we're spotlighting a specific portion of the card rather than having a scene that takes up the entire card front. So now I've got my little frog and I've touched all of these things onto my card here using some foam tape. This little frog is so cute, I just love how he's jumping up in the air. Before we go any further, I need to die cut a piece of craft foam or fun foam and I'm going to attach this to the back side of my panel. I used that same stitch circle die and we're going to be using this as a little bit of a shaker well for our card. So I'm going to just trim off all the edges. This helps make sure that I get the circle in a nice perfect placement. On a scrap piece of white cardstock, I'm going to stamp a sentiment from that Hoppy Days stamp set. I'm going to heat emboss this with some detail white embossing powder. I stamped it in some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut around this. I think we all wish we could cut this quickly. So this is going to go on our card right there. Moving on to the sky, I'm using the negative piece from the panel that we die cut earlier. And I'm using this to be the inlaid portion of my sky. So I'm using some squeezed lemonade distressing for the first color. Then I'm going to bring in some mustard seed for the slightly darker yellow. And I love these two colors together. They're such a vibrant and beautiful yellow combination that really looks nice. And this created a perfect sky backdrop for my scene. So here you can see I'm going to put this together. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up perfectly on my card by placing it inside the well. I'm going to make sure it's perfect. And then I'm going to add some tape to the back. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over, hold it down, and lay it on top of our card. Now I haven't put any tape onto the panel yet, just on that circle. And I'm going to go ahead and press that down through the acetate and lift off the other portion of the card. And there you can see we have our circle in the perfect placement for when we put the rest of our card together. Before we go any further, I need to add in my sequins for my shaker. So I'm using a variety of pretty pink posh sequins to add in some beautiful colors and combinations to match my card. I used some aquamarine, these are sparkling clear. I'm going to also use some pink blush and lime sorbet. Here's the lime sorbet right here. These are the 4mm and 6mm in all of these different colors. You can see the 6mm are bigger. So that's the pink blush. I'm going to add some of that in. And finally I'm going to add in some orchid sequins to go ahead and add in a little bit more color. So I'm attaching my panel onto my card base using some score tape and I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on top of my shaker elements. To finish things off I'm going to add in a little bit more sequins. I scattered some of the colors that I used inside the shaker card. I scattered some of them outside around the little scene here. You could totally skip this step if you wanted but I like adding some sequins in to kind of extend the shaker outside of the well kind of brings the card together and really adds a nice bit of interest and fun. Lastly, I'm going to take a little bit of glossy accents and cover all of the lily pads with this glossy accents and I'm also going to cover the eyes and the spots on the frog with it as well. And this creates just a little bit more extra dimension and shine to the card and really finishes the entire scene off. So that's going to do it. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to stop over at the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on this card including the products used. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.